Hey guys, it's Chris from Data Vids. Today I'm going to talk to you about date time in .NET. Now it seems like a really simple topic, but after having doing a project recently at my work where I had to do a lot of conversions with date times, I'm going to tell you it's not a simple topic and you're going to see why pretty soon, but after watching it, it's going to be simple for you. So real quick, what we're going to talk about talk about datetime kinds, we're going to talk about conversion to string, we're going to talk about storing in UTC, why you should do it, uh, when you don't need to do it, and we're also going to talk about how to convert it back from UTC when you bring it out into your program. And then the best part, how to format it exactly how you want it in your application in a string afterwards. All right, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that alarm bell down below, you'll get the video alerts as they come out, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for your support. Bye. All right, let's get right into it. Let's so start with the type. We won't spend much time on the type, but it's important to have the starting place. So let's say you want to create a new date time. You can instantiate it with the new date time. And there are 12 overloads. Uh, once again, we won't spend much time on this because you probably won't use it too often. Um, but the most common ones you'll see is um, year, month, day, or a combination therein with seconds, milliseconds, etc. And the other one I've seen but I've never used is ticks. Number of nanoseconds since January 1, beginning of time. I don't know. If you find a use for it, let me know. I never have. All right, something I like to do once I've defined a date time without any parameters is just say, we're going to set it to right now. So you go date time dot now. Or my date time is equal to, and then static now. Or UTC now, or min value. Min value is the absolute min value that a date time can have. There's also max value but now really means right now. And don't forget all of our types usually have a nullable choice with them as well. So you could say, you know, date, you could say uh, date time and just throw that question mark after it. My nullable DT for date time equal new date time nullable. And now if you were to give it a, a value, could pull it out by saying the value but what's really cool is you could check if it has a value by doing has value which is a boolean so you could say if oops insert button was on if if my nullable dt dot has value then you could you know print line write line my nullable dt dot value i think you could probably see a couple scenarios where has value could be really handy. So let's talk about UTC. So when you build a date time now, you're saying right now based on the server or the workstation that's running this program right now. So let's think about that for a minute. If your server's hosted in say New Jersey and your customers are in California and then you've got other customers in Central Time you're going to want to convert that to a centralized time, which is already done for you. It's called UTC. And then you're going to want to convert it back to the time zone that they're in so that they can display a time that makes sense to them. For UTC, you've got a couple of choices for just creating the UTC that's currently for what, what the time is currently. So you could do datetime.utc now, which you saw a little bit earlier. You could also do um, you could do system dot time zone info dot convert time let's see convert time to UTC. In this case, you're going to supply that time that you're going to convert it convert to UTC. It probably won't be now, otherwise you just use UTC now. But you get the point. But that alone, as we were saying earlier just might not make a lot of sense. You want to tell it the time zone that it's in or the time zone that you want to convert from to UTC so that you get the correct value in the database. A couple of places where you don't need to do that is going to be anywhere that it's a system a system data point. For example, a log that you never need to display to the user but always just use to universal time, which is just date time to universal time. That's going to use the server time because for logs, who cares, right? It's going to be accurate. We're talking about places where the user has interaction. That's what, what I learned the most recently that was really so important I thought I should share with you guys. So getting back to this convert time to UTC, 
we have to tell it where it's coming from. Where is the time zone current that the user put the information in? So let's specify time zone info. My time zone. I'm just going to paste in here time zone info that find system time zone by ID and you put in the string with your time zone and I'll show you where to get all those in a minute. And now you can use that mytz as this parameter. And it's going to accurately convert it over. You do need to let it let it know that kind though still. Good. You're going to say your date time that you've specified equals to date time specify kind the value which is the date time you just had and your kind. If you look at the choices there's only a couple UTC unspecified or local. Choose unspecified because you're about to convert it. Now we can put this whole thing together make it a little bit more interesting instead of doing date time now make it a little bit more realistic. Let's say we got something from the user. We'll do year, month, day. Give it a time of the day. Minute, second, hour, minute, second. And we'll print it out to the user. before and after just to make it to where you can really tell what we did. And we'll do the before. Right before we convert it right here. And then a read line. See, converted from my local time zone, or converted from the time zone we set here central to UTC, it went forward by six hours. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that there's a place you can get all these in case you're wondering how to put them into your application. So there's actually a couple places you can get that. One is the registry. If you go to registry on your server or your workstation, you look for a key that's in a path similar to this. Computer, HKEY, Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version. I know we don't use Windows NT anymore, but they still have it in the registry pass, right? So if you look in there, you're going to see um, within that all these time zones. Afghanistan, Alaskan, Lucian, etc. Alright, you can get the string from within that hive right here. Just double click it, copy and paste. Um, the other place is in SQL Server. It actually pulls it from the registry, so you can either pull it from the registry with your code, or you can run a SQL script. Select star from sys.timezone info if you use SQL Server. And you kind of, this is really useful too. Um, this is a good segue into, remember I promised you I'd tell you how to convert it in SQL Server too, so we're going to come back in here and we're going to reutilize this table for that. Because as you can see, there's UTC offset, and then it's, whether it's currently daylight savings time or not, you don't want to have to keep track of that. You want your application to you want the system libraries to do that for you. But before we finish up, uh, before we come back to and do the SQL conversions, real quickly we're going to convert back from UTC and then we'll jump back over here, okay? So let's get back to our application. Okay, let's go back to full screen here. So we've converted to UTC, we printed it, then we print it, then we convert to UTC, we print it again. Now let's convert it back to local. I'll show you how to do that and then we'll print that once again. Alright, so let's just call it result 2 or we'll call it local result. We'll take our result, which we know is a UTC time, right? And now we're going to convert that. So, why don't we use system dot time zone info dot convert instead of convert time to UTC, we're going to convert time from UTC result, and then the time zone that we're going to convert it into. Which if I use my TZ, that central time from above again. Now, oh, it's under underlining green because we're still running it. Let's go ahead and stop that. And it's, that's Shift Alt Enter to toggle between full screen and 
on full screen in case you were wondering. So, um, uh, we're missing one thing. I'm sure you can guess what it is, the date time kind. So just like we did here above, we said it's unspecified. Now we're going to tell it it's UTC. Because we know it's UTC, we're going to go from UTC to local. Okay? So uh, we have that, and we're going to this will be we're going to use this on result. So we're we're taking the result that we know is UTC, and we're passing it in here, and it's going to modify it and spit it out here, and then we'll go ahead and do our conversion. So let's let's write that to the screen. Console dot write line local result, and I'll hit a five, and there you go. So two o'clock central becomes eight o'clock. UTC and then convert it back to 2 o'clock central. Very good. Alright, we're going to now switch over to SQL Server and then we'll come back for the um, string formatting at the end. So bear with us, I promise you it'll be worth your while. Okay, before we get into the fancy conversions like we did in .NET, let's do the same thing we did as we did in .NET, which is just the real basic stuff. So that's, you know, select get date function is going to get you the current date in your current time zone. I can do similarly get UTC date. These are built-in functions to SQL Server guys. So if I run them both by highlighting and hitting F5, you'll see current date in military time, uh, which in my case is 9.37 p.m. and then convert it to UTC. Alright? 3.37 p.m. the next day, February 5th. Let's do our conversions now. Now, SQL Server is one of those things where every couple editions it comes out, things get easier to do, and there's a shorter command to do everything. I'm going to show you the easy way, which probably works only in SQL Server 2016 and newer, um, but there are several other ways to do this. So, let's go ahead and put um, a date time into a variable, and then we'll go ahead and convert that. So, let's do declare uh, my date put the at sign in front of it. Um, date time. Okay. Now let's set, select into that. Select how about uh, get UTC date. So we could do select at my date equal to that. Now just to see what's in there, let's go ahead and select at my date. We'll run that. As you can see, it put in the 341 from UTC. And now if we want to see what that would look like in a specific time zone, it's actually going to be really easy. Check this out. Select at my date, pasting in at time zone, Pacific Standard Time. And check it out. This is one of those strings that came from here. So if I scroll down, you're going to find Pacific Standard Time. There's SA, but there's there's a bunch of specific Pacific Standard Times. We'll look at them in a second. Um, but so if I highlight this whole mess here and run it, you'll see the UTC here at 3:42 and Pacific Standard Time um, minus eight. All right. So as we're saying, it's not really going to give you what you want here, right? Because we get you know, we're getting this minus six. Yes, it's the accurate response, right? It's a UTC time minus six, but you're looking for an actual date. So I'm going to give you something that you're just going to copy and paste, memorize, or you can follow along. It's up to you. So we've got this one long statement where we're converting the date time to the output, uh, which is a date time with offset, and we're switching the offset, which if you hover over these built-in functions, it actually tells you what it does. It's, it's the switch offset function which returns a date time offset from your date which we're taking the date part the part of the date as an integer which is the, the, the offset and then we're using the new SQL Server 2016 feature at time zone and specifying the time zone so if you go ahead and run that you will get the one you're looking for 23, your 2312 military time. 
All right, let's wrap things up here by our, our string formatting. So there's a few really quick ways that I'll show you. So you could do um, my string equal to your date, your date time object dot to short date string. If you just want something nice and sweet, um, my string to uh, date time dot to long uh, long time string. That's going to be a little bit different output. I'll show you what those both look like. Uh, and then of course, if you want to do a custom one. I'm not going to put the whole Microsoft documentation out here, but you could just do two string, and you can put in whatever format you want with the days, the months, if you want the, the seconds, milliseconds, whatever it may be, and let's print those out for you so you can see what they look like. syntax right lowercase s all right we'll run that all right let's take a look at what each one corresponds to so uh, as you can see I can zoom that one in a little bit uh, my string the short date string just looks like this um, and this one here is a long time string and there's also I think there's another one we'll do that real quick but this is our, our custom here and go to the Microsoft documentation just Google um, you know, date time string formats and go to the actual Microsoft page in this case. I know a lot of times I tell them Stack Overflow is better. In this case, go to the Microsoft page to give you all the possible combinations there, including some that are written out like the word, you know, Monday or whatever. Um, but um, I guess I better stop it here actually. If any of you guys have bared with me to the, the very end of this video, I very much appreciate it. Uh, if you do have questions, Drop them in the chat, either I'll answer them or one of the fellow viewers will, and have a wonderful day.